Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Michelle Fondon. I'm an author and speaker and author of 10 books, including these little beauts. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. And thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. I do readings 30, 60 and 90 minute readings, twin flame romance, general readings, life path and purpose. You can book that at my website, michellefondenauthor.com. Welcome to Divine Feminine Guidance, where I guide you on a twin flame topic throughout your journey and also spiritual topics as well. Today's topic is how to get over the obsession with your Divine Masculine Twin Flame. I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach today because I've done this topic in the past and throughout this video, I will attach some links to those videos that I did in the past about the twin flame obsession and how you might be feeling about your divine masculine at various times throughout your journey where you feel very compelled to, to be with them, to talk to them, to see them, to have them respond to you and all of that. But I'm taking a little bit of a different approach as I am teaching you divine feminine how to become empowered in yourself. And this came to me because I was thinking about some of the lessons that I have had over the years, not necessarily with the twin flame trajectory, but with life empowerment, life experience, and what I have been taught in the past. In order for you to fully grasp, to fully understand what I'm about to teach, I'm gonna say some funny phrase here, and it's mind your own business, mind your own beeswax. And really that is the crux of helping you to get over that twin flame obsession. Way back, and I talk about this in my Divine Feminine vlog number two, which I will post here. Way back, I was dating someone who had an alcohol addiction and I attended many AA meetings with him to help him get sober. I was being supportive, I guess. But also I attended many Al-Anon meetings. And while I'm not 100% sold on Al-Anon, I think AA is a great program. I think the 12 steps are amazing, but the program materials themselves are pretty darn amazing. And one of the principles that I was taught during the Al-Anon family groups, maybe you have an alcoholic parent or an alcoholic child or an uncle or grandfather or grandmother, but there are many different programs like Al-Ateen, Al-Anon, adult children of alcoholics, but they all have the same basic principle. And really that principle is mind your own business, stay in your lane, <laughs> do not get preoccupied with what the other person is doing. You need to mind your own business and focus on what you are doing. Now, this is a really interesting principle because we know what it can be like when you're on the highway and there's a huge accident and traffic is at a standstill. As you're creeping forward, really scanning the highway for a big problem, finally, as you inch forward, you see the cause up ahead, it's an accident. Now maybe the police officers or the rescue teams have closed off one or two lanes, but then that leaves four to five lanes open. But the major problem with the slowdown at this point is what we call rubbernecking. In other words, it's people not minding their own business. It's people who want to look, who want to see what is going on, what the accident was, who's involved, who got hurt, and they're not paying attention to the road, which often leads to other accidents. Because if you're driving a car and looking at something else at the side of the road, then you're likely to hit the car in front of you because you're not paying attention. And so I would like you to keep that image fresh in your mind as I'm moving through the lesson of this video, oftentimes there are other reasons why we become obsessed with our divine masculine twin flame. For example, we're going through a spiritual awakening 
and we're seeing signs, synchronicities, we're hearing our divine masculine in the 5D, we're having very vivid dreams of our divine masculine, we might be feeling their presence and hence the cause for the obsession. But oftentimes, once that subsides a little bit, once that disperses as far as energy goes, as Divine Feminines, we often stay very ultra focused on our Divine Masculine on a day-to-day -day basis. What is he doing? What is he thinking? What is he posting on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat? Who is he hanging out with? Who is he dating? <laughs> we get so incredibly fixated on every single move. We also get fixated on the Divine Masculine's motivations. So if he texts you something, you might be thinking, well, what is the motivation behind this, this text? What is he thinking? What is he feeling? What does he mean? What is he not saying? When is he going to text me again? And so we really get caught up in all of the details, overanalyzing everything, overanalyzing Divine Masculine's behavior, overanalyzing Divine Masculine's progress, and we become obsessed of our own doing. And this is a sign of unhealthy attachment. This is a sign that in the past you have also had these unhealthy attachments in relationships. Because if you are ultra focused on the other person, rather than being more focused on yourself, then you're not honoring your own life and you're trying to control in some way, shape or form the behavior of another person. And if you're not trying to control that person or the divine masculine in this case, then in the very least, you're trying to judge them for what they are doing or what they're not doing each and every day. So if you're really upset, angry, obsessed with why is my divine masculine dating this person? Why are they married to this person? Why are they still in that dead end job? Why are they still doing drugs and alcohol? Why are they still smoking? Why are they still whatever? It just becomes this ultra obsession with somebody else's life. Your divine masculine, even though they are your divine counterpart, your divine masculine has the right to live their life the way they see fit in every moment. They have the right to move through their lessons the way they see fit to move through their lessons. And they also have the right to take non-action if they don't want to take action. You as a person who is trying to micromanage another person's life, even from afar, is showing you how unhealthy you are. And I know that might sting a little bit. I know that might hurt. And you might even give the video a thumbs down because of it. And you might even leave the video because of it. But I'm not here to sugarcoat relationships for you. I'm not here to sugarcoat and stroke your ego in the right way that is going to make you love me and love my channel. No, I want to reveal what is truth for you. Because ultimately, and I know it's cliche, ultimately the truth will set you free. And the truth is, when you are fixated on another person's life, you are not paying attention enough to your own life. Go back to that imagery of rubbernecking on the highway and accidentally, even though that's not an accident, hitting the person in front of you because you were too fixated on what's happening at the side of the road when it didn't even concern you, right? So just think about that. Why do we rubberneck? Why do we like to see accidents? Why do we like to see tragedy that has nothing to do with our own lives? Why do we like that? Just think about it. Why do you like that? Why do you enjoy that if it has nothing to do with your own individual life? It has nothing to do with your outcome, your goals, your spiritual journey, your spiritual outcome. It's just something that happens on a day-to-day -day basis. Accidents happen. People get killed, people die, people are born. <laughs> and if they are not touching your lives directly, these day-by-day -day happenstance things that do happen don't mean anything to you or in your daily life because they don't directly affect you. 
But if you fixate on them, they do directly affect you. Just like that accident at the side of the road that you happen to be looking at. When you go about your life, looking at the accident at the side of the road, which could be a number of things, right? Where your divine masculine twin flame is headed this weekend, what party he's going to, what work event he's going to, whether he's going to the gym or not. <laughs> when you're fixated on that accident at the side of the road, what happens to you? What happens to you? I want you to put that in the comment section below because I really want you to think about this. What happens to you? Well, what often happens is you are gonna hit the car in front of you, but that's gonna look differently for different situations. For me personally, what it looked like when I was in that relationship with that alcoholic person, what that looked like to me was financial devastation because I was so fixated on my boyfriend's problems at the time. I was so fixated at how can I fix his problems that I wasn't seeing that my business was failing at an enormous rate. I wasn't seeing how fast my finances were going downhill because I wasn't looking at that. I was looking over to the side. For me, it looked like not having great relationships with my kids during that time period because I was fixated on my boyfriend. So do you understand how it can look really differently? It can look like financial devastation to you. It could look like a decline in your physical health, a decline in your mental health, a decline in your friendships. It can look like a lot of different things if you are ultimately just fixated on your divine masculine and worried and stressed about how he's going to come back to you and about how he's going to change and maybe he'll never change. I don't see how he could change in a million years. He's been doing the same things for the last five years, 10 years, 20 years, and he's never going to change. He's always going to stay the same. He's never going to come back to me. And so then you stay fixated on figuring out a way of how he could possibly change. When in reality, that really has nothing to do with you. How and when your divine masculine decides to change is ultimately up to your divine masculine. So by minding your own business, by staying in your lane and looking straight ahead, you're going to achieve a lot more in your life and you're gonna bring about more happiness, joy, serenity, abundance, friendships. And you are also going to be able to live out your life purpose because you are focused on your life and your lane. And when you do that, you will be a lot more healthy. You will better be able to let go of the obsession and you will allow your divine masculine the space that he needs to get healthy in his own time, to become awakened in his own time, and to come back to you in his own time. So I hope this was helpful, Divine Feminine. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to my channel below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. And thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sharing this video with other Divine Feminine Swin Flames. And thank you so much for your support of my YouTube channel. You can buy a book or two or three. You can join a boot camp or meditation course. You can also join my group coaching. The links are below. And I will see you in the next video.